Hello, good morning. How are you? Kaise hain aap log? Now you see nowadays it's very hot, isn't it? Just go outside. It's very hot, very sultry, and very scorching heat that is very prevailing outside in the atmosphere, and we have this unbearable heat. At the same time, when you look at the water, the streams or the rivers, when you visit any pond waters and all, the water is not very clean. The quality of the water is not very clean. It's somewhat become turbid or very green in color. We say if I see a surface comes on the or the water. What is this due to? Yes, very good. So today's topic it's about the pollution. Very good. So today's topic, children, we are talking about the pollution. Pollution. The pollution is nothing but the undesirable change that occurs in the environment due to the deposition of pollutants. So the substances which are responsible for causing pollution is called as pollutants. So today we will be talking about the two types of pollution that is very much harming our earth is namely air pollution, air pollution and then the water pollution. Now, coming to the air pollution, what are the reasons? What are the reasons which are responsible for causing the air pollution at the same time? Water pollution. The reasons that we can see is that, namely, the industries. Industries. You can include thermal plants here as an example. Thermal plants. There are many chemical factory, chemical fertilizer factories also there. We can say factories. So, so we are talking about the consequences. What is causes? Causes for this air pollution as well as water pollution. The other thing is causes vehicles. Vehicles, automobiles as well as two wheelers, vehicles. Another big problem is the deforestation. Deforestation. Removal of the trees, felling of the trees or the plants, you are clearing of the uh, surface, you can cut off the trees and all these things that is called as deforestation. So these are all the major causes which are responsible for causing this air pollution. At the same time, water pollution, the industries also plays an important role in causing the water pollution. Now, what is this releasing? Isn't it? We have to see that what are these things, what are this, these particular uh, the industries or the vehicles or the deforestation due to deforestation. What is that is released in the atmosphere? Either in the air as well as in the water. When you see that, we will try to draw a very beautiful a pie chart here. Draw a pie chart. Okay. And we see that a major part of that is the CO2. The other part is this and we have so we can take that as a great contribution a major contribution of that also we can say that so here we can see that this is the carbon dioxide which is contributes major and we have methane CFCs nitrous oxide and you can say that other gases like sulfur dioxide also so these are all the major gases which are actually produced in the atmosphere are released in the atmosphere due to these particular agents we can say okay now carbon dioxide is the major one that is a flux of carbon dioxide is occurring more that's due to the deforestation Vehicular emissions, carbon dioxide is released, other gases are also released, sulfur dioxide. We can say methane is also released from this industries with the coming out 
okay into the uh, open into the atmosphere and polluting the atmosphere let's say now what is the consequences due to the release of these gases what do you call these gases as very good so these gases are namely called as greenhouse gases they are called as greenhouse gases so these due to this greenhouse gases what is the consequences that we are facing now presently in the whole globe and especially in our nation or in the country what kind of consequences we are facing so due to this uh, we can say majorly this contribution and also from here and these factors also we can consider here they all are responsible for one of the biggest problem that we are facing now is the global warming that is global warming greenhouse effect effect and due to the release of this cfcs we have the problems that we face that's called ozone layer depletion ozone layer depletion is caused due to this cfcs release of the cfcs in the atmosphere and this carbon dioxide you can say methane and these gases we are responsible for contributing the problems that we are facing that's namely global warming and greenhouse effect we are facing. and due to this deforestation also there is a release of this carbon dioxide also and uh, due to this global warming the problem that we are facing is due to this reasons there is unprecedented floods due to the deforestation we find soil erosion like this the low lying areas the cities may be getting submerged into the water because of the unprecedented floods and soil erosions where the fertility is being lost and also due to this global warming there's another major problem that we face is the depletion of ground water the ground water level is also decreasing okay because of this reasons you can put very nicely so this factors you can say because of these problems we are facing floods we are having soil erosions there is also depletion of this ground water level on the other hand when you look on the water the aquatic systems again from the industries you can see that the effluents are let into the effluents are left let into the water directly they can be of heavy metals like mercury cadmium all this copper is been let into the water directly and there is high amount of nitrates and phosphates in this water bodies in the water bodies what we can say there is large amount of this particular factors So if you take this water body here, the whole thing is covered with the scums. You can say there is green scums are present here. The water bodies are there, so a lot of scums are present here, and uh, the water is completely as so. This is due to the what you can say is due to the deposition of. due to the deposition of this pollutants what you can find here due to the deposition of the pollutants and the effluents are draining directly into the aquatic systems phosphates and nitrates are deposited in the aquatic systems and due to that we find the the consequences that is plast so when you see here due to the heavy metals and organic waste that directly coming from the again from the industries these uh, when it let into the aquatic systems that leads to the consequences what is the consequences when you see on the other side in the atmosphere this is the consequences that is been faced in the aquatic systems what is the consequences that they face is namely accelerated accelerated eutrophication this 
some of the problems that we face in the aquatic systems. Another is the biomagnification. So we face two kinds of problems in the aquatic system. What is called as eutrophication. Eutrophication is nothing but the formation of the surface comes, algal blooms on the surface, which uh, paves a great disaster in the in the aquatic systems. Biomagnification is nothing but the amount of the toxic substances that increases in the successive trophic levels. So any toxicant that is present that gradually increases in the successive trophic levels if you see in the along a food chain or anything. That is what is called biomagnification. Now, now there is some parameters. You can see that there are some parameters which are actually responsible for assessing this particular water pollution. The parameters are namely what is called the BOD. If it is a polluter, the BOD will be, will be very high. Another parameter is said to be the DO, that is called dissolved oxygen. BOD is nothing but biochemical oxygen demand, that will be quite high. And when you talk about this dissolved oxygen, that will be very less in the polluted systems. So these are the two parameters that can you access in the aquatic systems. If the BOD is very high, that is the indication of the eutrophication also you can say, and also in the indication of this water pollution. And the DO will be very less. Now, so this is about this water systems. So in the air pollution, if you see that these are the various factors are present here. That is namely global warming, greenhouse effect. Another thing that is because of the CFC, the release of the CFC, that is also a problem called as ozone layer depletions. And the CFCs are nothing but they react with the ultraviolet radiations which is forming in the stratosphere. They strike that and the chlorine atoms they try to compete with the oxygen or the degrade the oxygen and from forming the ozone layer. So these are the problems that we are facing in this particular thing, consequences both in the atmosphere as well as in the water system. Now, how to control this? What are the control measures? How can we control these problems that is arising due to this air pollution water? Now in the case of air pollution, the control measures that we can implement is what in industry is Electrostatic precipitator. Electrostatic precipitator. Electro electrostatic precipitators is nothing but where the effluents, that means this, uh, the discharges, the gaseous discharges that is released from the industries, for example from the thermal plants, is charged by subjecting it to a some cathode ray tube. That means they are negatively charged. And these negatively charged particles which are trying to blow are being attracted by a collecting plates. They collect those uh, negatively charged particles. So they get suspended the air itself. And the clear pure air is let outside. So this is what is the benefit of electrostatic precipitators. So once again I am repeating children for you. Electrostatic precipitators is usually applicable for the industries especially for thermal plants. Where the gaseous emissions before it is being let out into the atmosphere is charged by a cathode ray tube and these particles are getting negatively charged and the negatively charged particles are getting absorbed by, uh, by collecting plates which are present underneath. They absorb these negatively charged particles and so that the heavy particles, whatever the pollutants are there, they get attracted and some pure air is being let out. Another thing that we can fit into the vehicles, I said the vehicles, automobiles, is catalytic converters or catalytic converters. Catalytic converters are nothing but this is the use of a catalyst. What is the catalyst? Is mainly the catalyst you know that we can study in chemistry. Okay, that's actually responsible for the rate of the reaction. The catalyst that we use that we fit into the vehicles are made up of platinum, sodium, It is used as a catalyst. This can really convert this unburned hydrocarbons into carbon dioxide and hydrogen. Even carbon monoxide is converted into the carbon dioxide. So this is the benefit of this catalytic converters. And this can be used only when leaded, unleaded petrol is used. So this can be applicable only under unleaded petrol is used. So because lead will react with the catalyst and stop this process of this conversion. So that is why 
when these uh, vehicles are fitted with this uh, catalytic converters, we have to try to use the unleaded petrol. And better benefit is that very nice in Delhi and all we see that use of CNG, compressed natural gas. I think you have heard about it. That's the zero emissions. So which do not release any pollutants into the atmosphere. So no emissions at all. So compressed natural gas. This also is one way where we can reduce the pollution. Another is use of biodiesel. Now we can go for solar vehicles. Solar powered vehicles. Okay. The better thing is cycles, bicycles we can use for controlling this air pollution. How to control this water pollution? There is a very interesting work which has been conducted by in Humboldt University in Germany. It is a collaborative team work uh, titled as FOAM. FOAM means Friends of Arcata Marsh. Friends of Friends of Arcata Marsh. So according to this, what is this means? The effluents which have been sending out directly into the aquatic systems. What you try to pass is, before it has been sent into the aquatic systems, they have constructed a very big lane. So here they have, they have, they have, they have the effluents are directly let into a very long barren land, a marsh land. It's about 60 hectares. The 60 hectares of marsh land has been let, which is actually been supplemented with microbes like bacteria and fungi. They neutralize these harmful substances and send out the clean water into the aquatic system. So clean water is been sent into the aquatic system. So a large area has been procured as for this purpose. It is where this process is very naturally it is being done. Okay, so it is where is the sequestration of these uh, harmful substances has been done and uh, the microbes will act on these harmful substances and degrade it and they can be used as a fertilizers also and the clean water is being sent into the aquatic system. So this is a very good process what is being called as titled as foam. Another thing you would have studied in the strategies in the strategies uh, in uh, the improvement that you would have studied. What is the what is the strategies that is being implemented in the in the food production and all there you could have studied that the sewage treatment plant that can we can implement the another important process is sewage treatment plant sewage treatment plant which is involving the primary treatment as well as secondary treatment is made involved and the activated sludge that can be used for producing a useful product okay so this is what we can implement as far as the water pollution is considered how can we control it and as far as the air pollution is considered these are the various measures now let us now sum up recapitulation what we will try to see so today's topic we have dealt about this pollution pollution is nothing but undesirable change that is causes in the atmosphere we are talking about air pollution water pollution and what are the various causes industries vehicles and deforestation is also there and due to this there is the emission of greenhouse gases and we can see that there are some of the gases like carbon dioxide methane nitrous oxide and sulfur dioxide contributing for a major problem that is namely global warming greenhouse effect and CFCs is responsible for ozone layer depletions because of that what is the problems that we face we face unprecedented floods there is a soil erosion is there depletion of the groundwater level will cause and this is what is due to this air pollution okay now due to the water pollution is nothing but the effluents which is untreated is directly entered into the pond system when it is being entered into the streams or the rivers we can see the two parameters, the BOD is very high and dissolved oxygen is very less. And these problems that we face here is accelerated eutrophication and the problem is called biomagnification, right? Now, how to control this? As far as air pollution is considered, we can control by, in industries, by equipping with electrostatic precipitators. In the case of vehicles, we can use catalytic converters. And also we can use the CNG, we can supply biodiesel, solar vehicles, uh, uh, cycles can bicycles again can can come into the uh, into, into our uh, society where the pollution can be reduced very drastically and also it is good for our health also and uh, another very interesting part is the Euro three norms can be followed Euro three norms can be followed Euro three vehicles which has been introduced which have form which has the standard emission uh, norms that obliged to that so this is one way and another way is this 
in the water pollution, we can introduce this foam that is where 60 hectares of marshland has been led, which has been supplemented with uh, microbes and they degrade it. And this water is purified water has been let into the streams. And this is the natural way. Another way is the sewage treatment plant, which is says we have studied in earlier chapters. That includes the primary treatment and secondary treatment. So with that, we are can control this air pollution, which is highly dangerous and this really uh, harms our earth and it becomes it makes us unsafe to live on this earth. So one is the what I would like to emphasize is that plant more trees, stay healthy, and then save our environment for the future generations.